on the bench today is a, uh, I've got an HP uh, 5245L frequency counter. <clears throat> this is a, unit, a very sick unit right now. Let's uh, see if we can get working. Um, we'll just do a quick uh, look at it and then we'll get into the problems. So right off the bat, you'll notice one of the... Um, display cards is missing and it's uh sitting right over here on the bench and we'll get back to that in a minute but uh anyway i got this unit uh on ebay and uh thanks to the fedex man it's got a busted uh handle here on the side but uh it's had some other problems so we'll flip it over and we'll look at uh what's been done to it so far so when I got the unit, uh, I first powered it up, and um, it was uh, it was counting sporadically. Um, and what was happening was is the um, the uh, power supply filter capacitors were so um, dried out and, uh, that uh, it was the the uh, unit was triggering itself off of the uh, noise on the power supply. So the first thing I did uh, to clear that problem up was uh, replace all of the electrolytics in the power supply section. Uh, what I did was uh, just uh, for ease of uh, fixing the unit, I uh, left some of the old, uh, the old cans in um, there and then the one up uh, here. But uh, they're all disconnected and uh, they've been replaced with these uh, new electrolytics. But that's the first thing I did. Once I got that uh, those caps replaced, um, the unit stopped triggering on the uh, on the noise. So that's been done so far, and uh, now we'll move to the next problem. All right, so uh, we got the unit powered up now, and uh, other than it's really loud, the fan in the back is really loud. But um, right now I've got it uh, powered through uh, the isolation transformer, and um, it's right now it's in a uh, it's in a uh, check mode so again it's in check and we're in a uh, manual start so what should happen is is this display should count uh, it should count all the way up depending on the uh, depending on this on the speed from the time base you know it'll count faster or slower there it goes you can see it'll count, and it should count all the way up. Uh, I've got one. Uh, I've got that uh, board on the uh, on an extender now because uh, we can see the problem here. So uh, the next problem I notice is that uh, once it's once I got the power supply issue resolved and it started counting up again, uh, then it wouldn't count uh, beyond the uh, the second digit right here. And what's it is? This is just a series. Of, it's just. Just a series of decade counters and it should count all the way up the next one you know the next this the previous channel triggers the next channel and it just ripples all the way up through the end but uh, this channel here is uh, as you can see is just split between zero and one so let's take a look at the manual now and i'm going to turn this off just to get rid of the noise but uh, uh the service manual's got uh, a lot of good info in it and one of the things it has is just a basic uh, counting sequence. This is up in the, the front, uh, the theory section, I guess, of the manual. And uh, so what we're looking at is the basic, uh, this is the basic uh, counting sequence for these counters. Uh, when you power the unit up, everything is reset to zero. So all of the counters start at this uh, zero state. And then it's basically a, a four-bit uh, binary count down from zero to nine and then uh, it repeats over and over again to the count and then there's a um, there's some uh, a neon tube uh, neon uh, bulb uh, decoders on the board that's what this uh, this this black uh, this big black housing right here it's got a um, it's got some photo photo cells and some neon bulbs and that's the BCD format and converts it to as uh, a zero to nine uh, digit display to drive the Nixie tube. So it just takes this, uh, it takes this four line code 
and then uh, takes this binary number here and converts it to a decimal number, so 0 to 9. But uh, if you remember from the uh, just a minute ago when I showed you that it was, was counting, this, uh, this channel was counting uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And also, uh, sometimes when you boot it, uh, when you start the unit up, it'll, uh, without resetting, it'll uh, just go on to some random uh, number on the display. And we'll take a look at that again. So there's a random number display. And now it's showing 0707. Uh, we'll reset it. And it goes back to 01. So. What it looks to me that, that is happening is um, this this first line is counting, and it's going from zero on the startup to counting the first decimal, and uh, so it counts up to one, and the pulse carries through uh, on the next count to reset the uh, A flip flop. But uh, it looks like the B flip-flop never counts through. So on the display, it just goes 0, 1, and 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 all the way. And it never counts up. Now, if you look at the... All right, looking at a schematic of the counter, and this is a schematic of the uh, A15 board. This is the A15 and, I believe, the uh, A16. In this case, we're looking at the A15 board. Uh, so your count signal will come in through this line here, and it will go to the first uh, buy stable, the flip flop. It'll count, and then the count is supposed to go to the next, which is the uh, B binary B, and it goes uh, from that. It goes to the binary C, which uh, feeds a pulse back to uh, the binary B, and it also uh, continues up to the binary D, and this counts all the way through for your binary. And again, here's the um, the uh, this is the the neon tube uh, and the photocell matrix that is used to convert this this binary number into a decimal number. But uh, the only the only way this is going to work is that each of these flip flops has to trigger the next flip flop. Well, this A flip flop uh, is triggering the B flip flop, but the B flip flop appears to never change states. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at uh, this flip-flop here. Now I've had the board out and I've already replaced uh, one suspect resistor on it, but uh, that didn't fix the problem. Uh, so my next course of action is gonna be checking and replacing these two transistors here. All right, what are we looking at here? This is a display of the A bit of the binary count on the decoder. So on each of these uh, four flip-flops there is an uh, output line that will put out the BCD output for that flip-flop. So this is the BCD output A, BCD output B, uh, BCD output D, and BCD output C. So there's a there's a point on each of these uh, each of these boards on the, uh, on the card edge that, that you can actually check the output of the flip-flop. So right now we're looking at the output of the BCDA uh, showing the pulse and you can see that, uh, let's we'll scoot way back here, that every time that pulse makes a positive transition it goes from one and a negative transition going back to zero. So let's take a look and see if we get anything on the B uh, BCD output. All right, I've moved the uh, oscilloscope to the B uh, BCD output B, uh, which is on pin nine. And looking at the scope again, we see nothing on the output line. Uh, it is still uh, the counter is still counting up, so there should be something. But uh, we are not getting any display on the output line. Just for uh, curiosity's sake, we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, BCD C and D outputs as well. All right, there's the uh, C output, the C BCD output. 
and there is the D B C D output. So again, we are not uh, we're not getting anything, and um, you always have to take my word for it. But if we sat here long enough to watch this, we'd see no uh, no deflection on the oscilloscope. I, uh, I know it's not going to be as quick a transition as the A because that's the fastest changing one. But take my word for it. There's no output. There's no rippled output on the B, C, or D outputs. So the the divider, or rather the uh, the, uh, the counterboard uses germanium transistors, which is uh, unfortunate because they're harder to come by. But uh, I've got a little supply here of a uh, two n uh, two n five two six P and P germanium transistors, and they're not exactly the the, it's the same. For one thing, these. Uh, Transistors have a uh, the base lead is tied to the case, um, which is not the typical way uh, a TO5 type transistor is wired, but uh, it shouldn't be an issue for us. And I got a pair on the curve tracer here that uh, I think are, are matched fairly well. I think they'll be matched uh, well enough for our application. So we're going to take these transistors and put them on the um, the A15 board uh, for the flip-flop and see if that fixes the problem. All right, and uh, a few minutes later, our new uh, transistors are installed. Uh, so we will put that counter board back into the counter and we'll see what happens. All right, so unfortunately, the repair thus far has not been successful. Uh, I've just got it straight up here, but uh, look at the counter. It's still uh, doing the same uh, 0101. Alright, well, after much head scratching, um, looks like, oh, well, as far as the board goes, I'm going to have to go back into uh, some more, uh, some, some deeper analysis. I pulled a lot of resistors. Uh, to check any suspicious values, I didn't see any. Uh, pulled all the transistors. Uh, two more uh, were bad. Well, one more was bad, so I went ahead and replaced the pair. Uh, the other two were good. I put them back in. So that's where it is now. Um, on an interesting note, I can, I am able to uh, turn that on. And, uh, I am able to trigger the other, the other stages in the chain. They seem to all work correctly. Uh, I'm gonna pull some uh, I'm gonna pulse uh, out of the circuit. So seems like my problem is isolated to that one uh, that, that one divider board. So we'll get that uh, analysis done, and uh, I guess this will have to be part one. Um, once I get uh, some more analysis done on this board. And I'll put that information in and we'll see if we can get it going on part two. Well, that's all for now. Thanks.